Welcome. As news reverberates around the world tonight that Saddam Hussein has been captured by US forces, we're going to look at whether the invasion of Iraq was actually justified. We'll be re-examining the causes of the war, how the war was won, and the debates that have emerged since. Joining us in the studio to talk us through that is our foreign affairs reporter, Patricia Smashing. So, how did this all begin? It all began when American intelligence agencies such as the CIA began to believe that Iraq was developing weapons of mass destruction. So, what do we consider to be a weapon of mass destruction? A WMD is either a nuclear, chemical or biological weapon. A biological weapon is when a disease is deliberately spread amongst the population designed to cause as much death as possible. A chemical weapon is when poisonous chemicals are again released into the general population designed to kill, once again, as many people as possible. So, the CIA believed that Iraq had these weapons of mass destruction. Um, what did the leaders of the US do with this information? The leaders of the US, uh, they allowed the UN to take the lead on this, United Nations, and they sent in um, inspectors to look for these apparent weapons of mass destruction. So we had inspectors in Iraq looking for these weapons? Yes, indeed. Did they find any evidence that Iraq actually had these weapons of mass destruction? No, they did not. But hang on, surely if Iraq had these weapons of mass destruction, they'd have hidden them from the inspectors? That would make sense, after all. And indeed, some would agree with you on that point of view. And as this clip shows us, George W. Bush and his Vice President Colin Powell definitely believe that, thinking that Iraq did have these weapons hidden somewhere. The majority of the American people trusted the President, and why shouldn't they? He had spent the better part of the last year giving them every reason why we should invade Iraq. Saddam Hussein has gone to elaborate lengths spend enormous sums, taking great risks to build and keep weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein is determined to get his hands on a nuclear bomb. Nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapon. Active chemical munitions bunkers, mobile production facilities. We know he's got chemical weapons. He's got them. He's got them. He's got them. So, what happened next? Let's take a look. Of the United States. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. These are opening stages of what will be a broad and concerted campaign. More than 35 countries are giving crucial support, from the use of naval and air bases, to help with intelligence and logistics, to the deployment of combat units. Every nation in this coalition has chosen to bear the duty and share the honor of serving in our common defense. So why did the US, and Britain for that matter, go to war with Iraq when the UN had already told us there were no weapons of mass destruction there? The Americans were convinced that the UN inspectors had been fooled and that the weapons were indeed hidden in the country. They therefore set a deadline for Iraq to get rid of all of its weapons. When the Americans were unimpressed by what the actions that the Iraqis took, President Bush ordered the invasion of the country. So, um, what did the first phase of the war look like then? soldiers simply turn tail and run away. Well, let's have a look at this next clip and see what the Iraqi information minister himself said about the performance of the Iraqi troops during the war. We bombarding them, we are chasing them, they retreat to the back, we stopped pounding them, they sent some of their units, so it's just like that, but still the situation we are deciding it's under our control. Yes, please. They killed a number of their mercenaries, injured another number, and the rest flew like rats. 
they are not even 100 miles or whatever. They are not in any place. They are on the move everywhere. They are a snake moving in the desert. They dropped their forces there and now they are in a trap. And we will turn the trap to a full and continuous drainage. Not at all, not at all. And you don't be frightened. They are a superpower of villains, really. They are a superpower of Al Capone. We besieged them and we killed most of them. And I think we will finish them soon. My feelings as those invaders, their tombs will be here. If there were no US troops around, was the invasion failing? It depends on whether you trust the Iraqi information minister or not. Yes, he is in Iraq, he knows exactly what's going on at the time, so in that sense he is reliable. However, his job is information minister. He's basically in charge of propaganda. And he will want the world to know that the Iraqi soldiers are fighting heroically, even if it's not perhaps the case. Mm. Well, let's have a look at this next clip showing an update on events in Iraq. Like the Minister of Information wasn't being entirely honest here. Patricia, if US troops were in Baghdad, the capital of Iraq, why didn't they just go to Saddam's palace and capture him? Or actually, why didn't they just bomb his house in the first place and kill him, rather than endangering the lives of so many civilians? The problems that the Americans had was that they never actually knew where Saddam Hussein was. He had many different houses, so locating him and bombing him would have been very, very difficult for them to achieve. Equally, when it became very clear to Saddam that the American troops were on the edges of Baghdad, he fled his capital city. Thanks for that, Patricia. That was smashing. So, uh, the country's dictators on the run, um, US troops entered the capital city, and they seem really, really happy. Surely that's job done. Let's have a look at this next clip. ...has not put an end to violence in Iraq. Two suicide bombers set off explosions at police stations in Baghdad, killing and wounding Iraqis working with U.S. authorities. And opponents of the U.S. invasion are vowing to keep up the fight. Crowds in Fallujah and Ramadi shouted pro-Saddam slogans.